In this video I'm showing how to fix an Admiral dryer that stopped heating. We got this dryer around 2013 from Home Depot and this is actually the first problem we've had with it. And the issue was that the dryer would start and it would run and it would sound like it was working but whenever I would come back and open it up the clothes were room temperature and still wet. I try to be respectful of everyone's time so I'll be transparent that the first few things I tried did not fix it. I had considered leaving those steps out of the video but just because it didn't fix it for my machine doesn't mean it won't fix it for yours. They're still totally valid troubleshooting steps. I put markers on the timeline below, so feel free to jump around. Anyhow, let's get into it. To begin, I found a lot of recommendations that you should start by checking your electrical. I was skeptical that any of this would be the issue, but I thought, what the heck, it's free, so I'll go ahead and test it. I went to the panel, found the breaker for the dryer, flipped it off, and flipped it back on. It didn't fix it. The receptacle for my dryer is one of these four-wire outlets. I used a multimeter to take readings off of the two hot legs, and it read 240, so I'm pretty sure the electrical's fine. And standard YouTube disclaimer that electricity is dangerous and will burn your house down and kill everyone, so be careful. Alright, so since none of that fixed it, I decided to take the dryer out and work on it. I disconnected the power from the wall and unscrewed the band around the exhaust vent so that I could remove it. You could most likely just turn the dryer around in your laundry room to access the back panel and work on it there. In my case, I'm a raging narcissist that craves constant validation and approval from strangers on the internet, so I have to have room to film myself. So to the back patio we go. Quarter inch screws aplenty, just remove these to get at the goods. The first thing I replaced was the heating element and the thermostat that's attached to it. Take a picture or do something ahead of time to remember where the cables are plugged in. I marked them with a sharpie. Then you can just pull the cables right off of the terminals. There are two quarter inch screws that hold the heating element in place, one on each side. After you remove those, it slides down and out. Mine was kind of blackened, but all of the filaments were intact, so I wasn't really sure if this was the problem or not. I got this kit off of Amazon that comes with a replacement heating element, as well as replacements for two fuses and two thermostats. The parts in the kit matched up exactly to the parts on the dryer, so I'll leave a link to the one I used in the description. First I installed the new heating element, along with the thermostat that goes on the side. Getting these two parts connected was a little fiddly, I just had to fight with it with a pair of pliers for a minute to get the thermostat seated on the terminal for the heating element. And a quick side by side of the old one and the new one, pretty similar. I put the new heating element back in place. Put the screws back in both sides, and lastly reconnected the cables. It was at this point where I thought, I'm feeling lucky, let's gamble. I don't need to replace these other parts. So I buttoned everything back up and triumphantly wheeled it back into the house. I reconnected everything, fired the dryer up, and it still didn't work. Cold as polar bear balls. And back to the patio we go. Even baby girl has lost interest at this point, so I know nobody's watching this video. A screw here, a screw there, and we're back to the guts. I decided to replace all of the remaining components, starting with this thermal fuse. I don't know if it matters, but I mark which cable was plugged in where just to keep them straight. And same thing as before, just pulling the cables to disconnect them from the terminals. I couldn't get my drill in at this angle, so I had to use a socket wrench to back the screw out. And once the screw's out, the fuse comes right out. And again, the replacement part looks pretty much identical to the old part. I put the fuse back in place and put the screw in, and reconnected both cables. Next I replaced the other thermal fuse, as well as the cycling thermostat. I made markings on the wires again just so I'd have some record of where they were. Disconnected the wires for the fuse. Removed this single screw. Quick side by side of the old and the new here. I put the new fuse into place, put the screw back in, and reconnected the cables. Alright, moving right along to the cycling capacitor. Same thing, the wires just pull right off. A single screw holds this guy on as well. And same thing, just installed the new one and reconnected the wires. So I put it back together, 100% confident that this thing was definitely fixed. I wheeled it back in the house, reconnected everything, ran a test load, and it's still broken. At this point it was personal and I was not going to let this machine beat me. I disconnected power and decided to start messing around behind the control panel. You just have to take these screws out and then this back cover comes right off. Seeing as how everything else has been replaced at this point, I had a feeling my beef was with the timer. I started by disconnecting these two plugs that are at the bottom. You can just pull on both of these. And then I needed a screwdriver for this plug with the blue and black wires and a pair of pliers to reach the ground at the bottom. You can also go ahead and remove the knob from the front. Next I separated the control panel from the top of the dryer. To do that I inserted a flathead screwdriver at the edge here and pounded on it firmly with my hand. I just kept at it until I felt it release. There's kind of a spring loaded gimmick that holds this thing together. Same thing on the other side. The spring on this side almost got away from me so just be careful when you do this that it doesn't drop down inside of the dryer or something. It wasn't a big deal though, I was able to just snap it back into the bottom of the control panel. Alright, so onto the timer, you can squeeze down on these tabs with a pair of pliers and it should release. The timer has two Phillips head screws that hold it all together, I just removed both of these. 
and it was pretty interesting to see what the inside of this looks like. There's something about the design of this part to be appreciated. I had always assumed there was some crazy electronic stuff going on behind this knob, but instead the entire thing works based on the wheel in the center turning and causing different contacts to open or close based on the position, and that gives the dryer its different settings. I don't know, I thought it was kind of a neat part. However, when I started inspecting the contacts closely, I noticed there was some kind of corrosion or crud built up on them, and one of them in particularly. Most of the others were fairly minor discoloration, if anything. So I took a small piece of sandpaper and started cleaning between the contacts with that, but I think I had better results using a flathead screwdriver. I took the screwdriver and went around and gave all of the contacts a light scraping, but the rest of them really didn't have much stuff on them, so I suspect it was the one that was gunked up that was the problem. I put the metal plate back onto the body of the timer, and then I put this little cylinder that's got the two sprockets sticking out of it on the back. I had to slightly turn the knob in front to get it to seat in place. Then I just put both screws back in. I pressed the timer back into place on the front panel plastics, and then reconnected the ground as well as the other three cables, and put the knob back on the front. I wanted to test it out before putting it back together the rest of the way. I set it to my usual setting of automatic dry low heat and started the dryer. I let it run for a minute and the result this time was that it was fixed. So that's pretty much the end of the story at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and put everything back together. I disconnected the power, pushed the top cover back down into place, I put the back cover back in place and put the screws back in, and at long last reattached the exhaust vent for the last time, reconnect the power for the last time, and put the dryer back where I found it. Alright so that's it for this video, I hope this was useful if you have this dryer and you're also having the same problem. Hit the like button if this helped you out, and thanks for watching.